Well, I, I want to find out. You you mentioned you you've you've said Brian that the the agency is broken in a lot of ways, and we're talking about the the CIA. And you know what's interesting is you mentioned one of the things that really struck me is you talked about the purpose of things really changing in ninety one when the Berlin Wall fell, and that's it's really interesting that came up in a conversation I had with uh, with uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor. Is he he talked about a very similar thing that if we look yeah. at a lot of how our national security and intelligence functions now is because we're in a post Berlin Wall world, and I guess when we look at that. How does how has the agency changed since then, and how is it now broken? Well, for ten years, okay. So the Soviet Union went belly up in ninety one. For ten years, CIA didn't have a a main mission, right? I mean, it was it was looking, searching for some kind of a mission. In fact, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, at that particular point in time, the famous congressman, he went to uh, you know the director of CIA at the time, and he said. Uh, Hey, do we even need you guys anymore? I mean, you know, you won. That's great. You know, Cold War is over. Do we even need a CIA anymore? So every all these politicians wanted the peace dividend. You know, they didn't want to be spending all this money on black bag programs and intelligence and stuff. They wanted to spend it in their own constituency. So, so that was how things were going until 10 years later when all of a sudden, bam, we got 9-11. Right. And so 9-11 changed everything because all of a sudden CIA went from no mission to a mission. But it was a very narrow mission and it was their mm. primary mission and it was counterterrorism. And so from the time from, from 2001 for 20 years, CIA forgot about China. They forgot about Russia. They forgot about Turkey. They forgot about the world. The only thing they were focused on was Al Qaeda and counterterrorism. So. The counterterrorism center in CIA became the power locus, the locus of power in CIA, and everything about CIA changed. So they hired people for counterterrorism skills. They got funding from Congress for counterterrorism. They had relationships with their congressional committees on counterterrorism. So the rest of the world, they, they figured, well, you know, we won. I mean, we just got to deal with these, you know, these terrorists around the world. We don't have to really worry about things. So they didn't. And then, and that's what happened to the the services and every everybody else. I mean, that's why you you hear, you know, you know the the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying things like, "Well, we mortgaged our future to counterterrorism, and that's why we're so behind China and Russia and all the rest of this stuff because we haven't been fo you know, following it." So mm -hmm. you know, so that's where the 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 point was, 1991, and uh, you know, so. And then once 9-11 happened, everything was counterterrorism. You couldn't, if you went to them and you said, hey, I, I've got a source in the Chinese premier's office, they would say, ah, yeah, does it have anything to do with counterterrorism? Okay, forget it. You know, I mean, they just didn't mm -hmm. care. So they weren't following this stuff. And CIA has just really gotten back into doing China about a year ago. I mean, mm. absolutely, 100%. You know, and, and I mean, I can back up any of these statements I make, so... That's sort of where we are, Jeremy. Well, I'm, I'm curious, though, because I guess the difficulty in it, it, at least that I see, is if you look at the Cold War, right? Like, there's a concrete enemy, right? Like, it's in, you know, it was the Soviet Union during this time. But if you right. look at the war on terror, like, well, just about anything can cause terror, right? You know, and, and I think that's the problem is you're, you're chasing Al Qaeda, you're chasing Al Shabaab, you're chasing all these different things all over the world. And it's that's not really like a there's no concrete path to victory. Does that make sense? And you kind of get yeah, dispersed. Is, since, is that a lot of what happened? Yeah, especially since you're fighting an ideology. You know, you can't stop exactly. An idea. You know, it's hard to stop an idea. You can stop a country, you can stop a military, but you can't really stop an idea. Now you can affect it, but see, that's another problem with CIA is when CIA went counterterrorism, they didn't go strategic counterterrorism, they went tactical counterterrorism. So what CIA basically did is they went to the teams. They went to SEAL Team 6. They went to the Delta Force. They went to the SEAL teams and the Special Forces groups, and they hired people directly out of those teams. So it wasn't like CIA created its its own special operations you know, group. They just went mm -hmm. and grabbed these guys and you know guys that were getting ready to leave the service and stuff, and they said, well, we want you to come and work for CIA, be in our special operations group and that sort of thing. And, and these guys said, well, shit, that sounds great. Yeah, let's do that. So, so that's what happened. So it wasn't even, but they, then they went after the target tactically. It was, you know, kill, not capture. You know, well, you know, you hear kill or kill or capture, but it mostly kill, not capture. And we were killing people all over, but they're just a, 
the soldiers. You know, they weren't the leaders. And they never mm. went after the ideology in any kind of a strategic way or propaganda way or just an information way in saying, hey, this is what we're up against. This is the ideology, and that's why we're doing this. They, they didn't even do that. It just went tactical the whole time. So that's one of the, that's one of the big problems, too.